Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. You know, let, let's talk about creating and, uh, and how we create. Uh, the truth is, is, is creation and turning your thought into a thing is not personal. It, it's structural. It's, it's a principle. It has a, it has a way of it, of it happening that, uh, that doesn't need you to be talented. It just needs you to understand uh, that structure. And, and, and so we want to take the time to understand uh, the structure and, and how to do it and uh, and those sort of things. So so it's very important. There, there's 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 three real um, ingredients in, in creation. Uh, what well, well, you maybe four. So so you have depends how you just de decide it. You have a current reality, current reality, a desired reality. You have uh, an identity. An identity in the desired reality. And then you have uh, an action. And the action is designed to move this reality uh, to that reality. So you have a reality, which is one ingredient. You have an identity. Uh, you have an action. And, you, and you're trying to have uh, the reality shift from one place to the other. And uh, what, what's interesting about this is... Uh, when I talk to a lot of people, it's obvious which aspect uh, they have the most problems with, okay? Some people have a really hard time with the desired reality. Like they have a really hard time choosing what, what it is that they would love to create. It's completely foreign to me because uh, that's not the problem I have. I have the opposite problem. I have too many things I'd love to create. But, but we can have challenges with the, with the desired reality where, where we go, well, I don't really know, Chris. Like, I don't know. I mean, you talk about being satisfied now. So, so like, I, don't really, I, don't, I don't really get it. So, so we'll talk a little bit about, uh, about that. Uh, others have, have a real problem with the current reality. Okay. Either they're so obsessed with the current reality, like they, they can tell you the current reality and everything about it and how they got there and, and their life. They, they are so fluent in their current reality. And others have a problem with the current reality, but the opposite problem, okay? The, op the opposite problem is they're not based in reality, the current reality at all. Like that, they're not willing to look at the truth, and they can sometimes uh, get taken advantage of because they're not willing to see the truth of someone else. Uh, they can they can pretend that they're making progress when really really they're not, and, and they're not able to see it. Okay, so so do you see that there's these two there's these two. So so some people can have a real hard time with desired reality. Either they've got too many things. Uh, too many ideas hard to choose or they just they don't have anything they're like i say do a land of plenty and they go well i don't know and then others have a problem with the current reality either they they don't they're not in it at all or they are like cement they are stuck in it you know they are locked into what's up with their current reality and how they got there but again challenges with them then other people have a real big problem with action, with the action, okay? And, and, and some, some people avoid the action, you know? They avoid it. They prefer to, to just think that stuff's going to happen without them actually needing to do anything, you know? They think it's, uh, you know, uh, the only thing that was ever said was, ask and you will receive. They forgot about the knock, you know, and the seeking. <laughs> they go, well, I've, I've asked, so it should just, it should just turn up. Hey? And, and so some people have a big problem with that. But then there's the other side of it, where, where some people have a problem where all they do is action. 
They just, they just, they always think it's their force of will. Action, 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 action. So can you, can you see these kind of these balances uh, around each of it? Okay. So, so let's, let's talk about this. And I want to talk about a few uh, personas of, of uh, the magnetic mind. So, so first up, the, when it comes to the desired reality, there's no right answer. There's no, there's no right answer what you're choosing to create. When I say, you, you know, a true choice is something you love. Can we edit that? A true choice can be something that matters to you. A true choice can be something you love. You see, a true choice is just true. It's got your heart in it. It's just, it's just true. It's just true. That's, that's, all it, that's all it is. So, so today, my, my choice this morning was to put on a world-class session today. That was a true choice, world-class. That was my true choice for today. And I've got my notes for, for today. True choice. It's just something you love. It's just something that matters, matters to you. Now, how do you know what matters to you? You make it up. You make it up. You say, this matters to me. There's no, there's no reason. There's no right thing. You see, it, it, it's you make it up. And that's tough. That's tough for people that literally need to work. There has to be a reason for everything. And, and, and the reason why we've got this reason for everything is because our whole life, there was always a reason. You're going to go to school to get the grades, to do the this. You're going to get the this, to do the this, to get the that, to do the this. You need to do this. You need to be good. You need to be bad. You've got to do that. Do you see how there was always a reason? There was always rules. Who's with me? Give me some feedback here. Who's with me? There was always a reason. There was always rules. There was always this. But do you remember when you were kids and you just said, uh, what are you doing today? I'm, I'm building a fort or I'm going for a walk. Why? There's no, there's no reason. There's no, I've got to go to the gym for this reason. There's none of this. It's just, it's just pure. It's just you're in the innocence of it. You see? So there's no, there's no right answer. It's just that it's something you'd love. It's just something you'd love. You just love it. You, you know, just love to experience, love to taste it, love to witness it, love to have it. So, so often we, we take our loves and we judge them. They're not big enough. They're not small enough. They're not this enough. They're, they're selfish. They're selfless. They're, they're all these things, hey? It should just be pure. So, so the way, there, there's no, there should be no reason, you know? One day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a meeting with Simon Sinek, Sinek and I'm going to say, don't start with why. Start with what you'd love. So, you, you know, you don't need a why, you just need to love it. You, it's just, you just, it's just, I choose it because you're a creative force. We don't need to, to try to make it grandiose or, or, or pull it apart to make it, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just what I would love. Why? Because I'm here having a human experience and this is what I would love to create. Okay. And, and so there's no one that can tell you what it is you would love to create, what matters to you. We can help you understand when you're going for the process or you're in reaction or, or other things to point out that you're not really in your essence, in your, in your truth, and just this matters, uh, this matters to me. Okay? This, matter, this is it. Pure and innocent, playful. I just love this. I, you know, I'd love to have that. Or I'd love to do this. Or I'd love to be that. Or I'd love to donate to that. You know, that's your truth. And so... For people like me that have lots of ideas all the time, uh, you know, I, I simply just sit with them and go, oh, yeah, how would that be? How would that be? And I, and I wait a bit. And I'll, no, that, that, that needs to be that. Yeah, I'd really love that. And then when I put it down, it's, it's game on. It's done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see it through. I'm going to see it through. So when, when you're creating and you, you're looking at your desired reality, there's only so many things that you can be creating at once. There's only so many things, hey? So once you've done the core four, right? And core four is just obvious. It's foundational. Life I love, <laughs> obvious. Uh, health and vitality, obvious. Being the creative force, obvious. And uh, 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 true nature and purpose, obvious. Because those are obvious. So you got four. 
then it's looking at this whole world and say, well, what am I going to choose to create? Now, now here's what's interesting is you don't have to have uh, this, this, this strange idea. H has anyone had one of those, uh, uh, ever gone to a seminar and there's a strange, that strange idea of like a life wheel? Who's ever, who's ever done that? And they, you know, they put these spokes in it. And then they make you go well, out of 10, how much are you on each one? And then they make you kind of color it in, hey? And then they say, well, look, that's not a very round wheel. <laughs> you know, um, usually the person on stage is completely out of balance themselves. Because <laughs> it's, it's just not true that you're going to focus on all the things all the time. There's going to be certain things that are more important to be creating right in that moment. Does that mean, there's just priorities. You, you've only got so much energy, okay? So, so as you're creating, it's not necessary that you have everything that, uh, that is in your life as a creation. Think about this for a second. That the act of creation is turning an invisible into visible. You're, you're creating it because you would love it. And I like to see it more as a rolling door. Oh, I create that, and now I'm going to add something else to that spot, and I'm going to create that. And now I'm going to add something else. And now I'm going to create that. And now I'm going to add something else. Does this make sense? Rather than it's like I've got this pre-programmed set of things that need to be perfect. And I must fill each one in. I'm going to create this. And then I'm going to create this. And then I'm going to, you see, I'm in this, I'm in this creative, creative aspect or creative mode. Now, let's look at the current reality. Okay. Current reality. So two, two problems with the current reality. One is that people are unwilling to see the truth, are unwilling to see the truth. And so I just want you to experience what is, what is your uh, relationship with the current reality? Some people are unwilling to see the truth. Some people are so focused on what's wrong. So focused on what's wrong. So, so let's look at both, okay? There, there's a type of person that will never, ever, 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 ever allow themselves to let go that let go of their problems or their pain in their past. They just keep on needing it to bring, bring forward, bring forward. I got this story that I've probably, you've probably heard me say uh, from my tennis coach. I was learning the second serve and, and you hit it very different to the first serve. And he said, you know, you know, Chris, uh, are you using this in the game? I said, no, I'm not very good at it. And uh, a while later he said, hey, you know, for a free lesson, let's do second serves. They have to, they have to go in the square and hit the back wall. And look, if you can get, um, uh, I think it was seven out of 10 or above, I'll give you a free lesson. So I got like nine out of 10 in a row. And so then he, with a big smile on his face, reminded me how I just told him previously that I couldn't do it. And it was a great lesson because he said to me, you know, he's like, Chris, uh, oftentimes we, we don't see our growth. Our brain hasn't caught up to what we, our actual current reality We're still too busy, you know, uh, thinking we're that when we actually are here now you know, because, uh, because many times we're, we're so uh, built into an old current reality, hey? We, we haven't actually realized. I mean, if you actually look at your last week, just do this for me, okay? Think about your choices. Think about your goals, okay? Think about what you're actively going towards and, uh, and look at that as a current reality of, of how that compares in the last week, right? Like, in the last week, are you moving towards it? Are you in momentum? Okay, now notice this. Okay, so look at your current reality and just ask yourself, in the last week, have I been in momentum towards my goals? Okay, now do this. Now make your current reality the last three months. If you look at it from the last three months, it feels different, you see? Because uh, is it true? Just give me a yes. If you look at your current reality the last three months, am I actually moving towards it? Or even go, my current reality is my last 10 years. <laughs> think about think about all of that. See, by changing what current reality is, everyone's saying, yes, very different. You can acknowledge where you really are. I mean, how about this? In the last 24 hours, how does it feel? I got, I got one person on my team and uh, if, you, if you look at their results in the last six weeks, terrible. If you look at it in the last week, it looks fantastic. Just depends which current reality you're focused on. 
Does this make sense? It just depends what that means. And so some people are so busy making their current reality uh, just always terrible instead of actually acknowledging, you know what, I'm actually moving now. My current reality is actually moving. So, so that, that's one person, hey, that's always trying to make their, their current reality never becomes, never becomes good. <laughs> their current reality, they, they never actually realize, hey, wait, I'm actually not doing what I used to do anymore. Like, wait a second, you know? We, we're, um, humans are so good at, at, at sensing and seeing patterns, hey, and creating orientation to the world that sometimes it can really screw us up, you know? I mean, imagine if we were all caterpillars, we, we, none of us would become butterflies. You know, we'd be like, I, I mean, I've always just crawled around, you know, I've always crawled around. None of us would be willing to go in the dark, completely, you know, turn into nothing and come out a beautiful butterfly. All, all of us humans would freak out at, <laughs> at the idea of losing ourselves. I mean, I'll never be a caterpillar anymore, but you could be a butterfly, but I'm just scared. You know, we, we, we over-process it, eh? We're so, <laughs> we're, we, we would be, I'm glad we're not, we'd be terrible, we'd be terrible caterpillars. <laughs> we would, we would be so, uh, so <laughs> it's quite funny, <laughs> quite a ridiculous thing to think to say, isn't it? <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> It's funny. We're, we're, so, uh, we're so busy recreating the current reality, hey? We've got a problem with it. The other, the other side of it is a person that never acknowledges their current reality. They've had the same end result for like five years and they feel like they're moving towards it. I see this with people a lot of times when their their goals are so grandiose. They're so about how like this amazing big thing they're doing, you know. I meet them a lot and, oh, I've got this, Chris, I'm starting this sanctuary where I'm going to have people come and they're going to do this amazing stuff and all these things. It's going to, it's going to be great. And, oh, that sounds awesome. And then a year later, they still haven't even bought the land, you know, and, and so they never live in reality, hey, they're living in this, they're, they're, they're just, they're just not, it's just not even happening. I see this a lot in people's health too. In fact, I got multiple people that I know just off the top of my head who have said, guys, here's my before pictures. I'm committed to health, you know, and it's like, look, mate, you, you, you're actually not, you know, I, I, you, this is the fifth time I've seen you do it. And we've only been Facebook friends for a month. <laughs> we've only been Facebook friends for a week. And now I've seen you start five different diets. <laughs> but it, but it's, it, it's like that, isn't it? You know, it's like that. They're, they're not actually uh, acknowledging. So, so the, the thing is, is current reality is, is you, you must acknowledge it as truth as truth and go well this is this is the truth this is this is what's here and it's it's actually a skill it's actually a skill to go okay what is true right now how am i actually being right now in this moment in this day and like how am i actually not how was i six months ago you know not how would i like it to be it's just going, this is, this is, the, this is it. So, so you must have a working relationship with what you would love to see created, but you must also be able to tell the truth about where you are now. The, the truth, not like nothing, you know, this is, this is the real, this is where it is, you know, this is it. This is how it is, but not with this, this extra meaning you attach to it. You say, look, I'm choosing to create a, a, an amazing movement and right now. You know, uh, this is this is what I'm up to, or you know, I'm choosing, and this this is it. We don't need to add the extra judgment and other things on it because because then that just creates unnecessary emotional stress to it. Hey, so so th these are these are two ends, and the last the last piece, hey, is action. Is action. So so many can have a challenge with action. Uh, so first we must define that action is, is that you always are taking action. 
there's both a masculine action and a feminine action in all creation, okay? That it doesn't matter what you want to create, there is a masculine and a feminine element to it, okay? The masculine is the attack, is the focus, is the choosing. The feminine is the nurture, the support, the grow. Does that make sense? So, so you must understand that, that uh, many of us have a relationship to action that's only masculine. Uh, and so the, it's important to understand uh, action. One of the big queries that people ask me a lot of times, they say, oh, Chris, I want to create this, but I don't know what I should do. I don't know what I should do to create it. I love kombucha. Anyone else? Cheers, anyway. Kombucha. That's uh, such a fun word to say. <laughs> it's like mellifluous. Just makes your mouth want to say it again. Onomatopoeia. Kombucha. Kombucha. So action. So action. Action. Very important. But, but many say, well, Chris, I don't know what action to take. Now, there is there's one of the biggest lies about uh, about people's uh, who have a cap I'm not capable belief. They say, I don't know what I should do. Now, what's what's obvious to you when someone says, I want to create this, but I don't know what to do to move my current reality towards it. Well, just I want to ask everyone on the call, what's obvious to you when you, you hear that? A person wants this, they know their current reality, and for, for some reason, uh, they're saying, but I don't know what I should do. Yeah, what's, what's obvious? Yeah, thanks, Jenny. Yeah, um, I, I, it's a lie. It's a convenient lie. That's what's obvious to me. It's a convenient lie. And, and here's why it's true. There's so many things that they could do, included go and find a book that teaches you how to do the thing. Go to you, see what I'm saying? Even just go to Google and search, how do I do this thing? Does this make sense? Give me a yes if you get it. Even as a basics, that is freaking pretty obvious. I need to talk to someone who knows how to, but, but, but they truly believe that they don't know. They said, no, I, Chris, I don't know what I should do. And it's this orientation to, please, can an authority figure tell me what I should do? Because I don't trust my own ability to connect the dots and make something happen. I must be told. So it's, it's very important that I don't know what to do is very childish. It's childish, hey? And I do it too. I don't know what should I do. I want to take my company to 100 million. I don't know what I should do. Well, yeah, I mean, I basically do. I need to have a product or a service that people absolutely love that works without my time. And I need to, you know, reach more people. And, and you know, those people need to buy something and, and I need to sell it. And there needs to be profit. Like, I, you know, so, so what, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it sounds like a big thing, but when you think about it, you're like, well, but, but, but many of us orient to, to a, a worldview that someone else must tell me because I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not capable enough to just know. Okay. And so whenever you hear yourself saying, well, I don't know what to do. You need to say, stop lying to yourself. Stop, okay. 
you say, well, I don't know what I should do. And then you need to say to yourself, stop lying. You do know what to do. Is it true? I do, I do, I do know. I do know at least something I can do to move towards that. Isn't it true? So there's something. And see, the, 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 someone has a challenge with action, with, with taking the action. There, there's so much going on for them that a lot of times just, just, just take the obvious action. And you never know what shows up. You just, you just never know how that opens doors. See, you know, ask, but then you must seek. <laughs> you know, keep on knocking on that door till it opens. You must seek, you must move. We, we want to create in this third dimension. We want to create, we want to see it in this physical form. This physical form is a, is a, is a world of action. It's a world of action. So, so the other type of, so is that, is that good stuff, by the way? I think it's, uh, yeah, right on, Claire. I think it's really good stuff to just really go, you know, I do know. I'm, I do know. I do know what I need to do. I, because it, it, if, you, if you go in the other way, I don't know what I should do. Please, someone come and anoint me with, your, with someone else's wisdom. Well, then if it works out, it was them. And if it doesn't work out, it was them. So when, when you always have to get the answer from someone else, where, where's the power gone, hey? You're definitely not building up your own self-power, but guess what? When you choose it and then it's right, and you, may, and you figured it out and it was right, and you figured out it was wrong, that's, that's where the learning, that's the feedback of how this, you know, the superconscious has this, this learning process, you know, uh, defines the outcome, takes an action, gets feedback, redefines and, and that, hey? The other, the other way that we can have a challenge with action is, is when all we do is take action and there's no, there's no time for nurture or feminine uh, growth. See, let's use a, a farming metaphor, hey? If all you do is just want to keep on planting more seeds to grow more crops, and every day you just plant more seeds on top of seeds on top of seeds, right? The the only the only thing that will grow is probably some some fat birds that will, that will enjoy eating all the seeds up. You definitely won't uh, grow the the outcomes that you wanted. And so this is the same as there's uh, there's only so much so much you can do, and then you need to let it grow. Does it, I think a lot of us get this. This is where this idea of surrender or receiving uh, takes place. But it, it, it's the idea of, of you must take the action. Hey, you must do it. But but then it's done. There's only so much you can do, and if you try to do more than that, it, it, there's no there's no way to do it. And and, and the, the left brain aspect of society always wants to outdo that there's an obvious rhythm to things, you know? I mean, it, it's true that, you know, uh, you, you can't stand over a tree and say, grow faster. <laughs> Except science is trying to figure out how to do it, <laughs> you know? Uh, Power versus force, even, Sean, really good book. But, you know, you, 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 you shouldn't really have a baby grow faster than nine months, you know? Like, there's a, there's a rhythm. There's a rhythm to how things grow. And, uh, and, and one thing that I always uh, share with the person who's, who's got a challenge with action is, is the Fibonacci sequence eh? and, and exponential thinking. The Fibonacci sequence and exponential thinking. Because the person who's obsessed with action, they just see action as linear. They think I do this, 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 and I get there, which is t just, it's just incorrect. It's incorrect. Uh, who, know, who knows the Fibonacci sequence? Uh, does does everyone, everyone know what I'm talking about when I say the Fibonacci sequence? Some people say no. Okay, so, so in nature, there's this, there's, this, there's this spiral that's just seen everywhere, okay? And when you, when you map it with geometry and math, okay, uh, here, here's how it goes. It goes... Um, one, one. So whatever happens in the first time period, the same happens in the next time period. Okay, so, so basically one, one. Then what happens 
is it adds uh, the, the, the numbers together to get the next one. So it goes one, one, then the third period goes two, okay? Then the next period it goes three. And then three and two makes five. Five and three makes eight. So it goes one, one, two, three, five, eight. Then the next time period goes 13. See how good my math is. 13, 21, 34, 55, 89. <laughs> I'm going to lose it there. 94, 144. And so it goes like this. It goes like this. Okay. And, and what happens is, is we, we always stop. Because imagine in your whole first year, you get to one. The Fibonacci sequence says you'll do the exact same amount for the whole second year. Then it says in the third year, you'll double it, okay, to two. And then the, the, the fourth year, you, you'll, go, uh, you'll go through to uh, a, a little bit more, three. And then it starts taking off, five, eight. 13, 20, and this is just seen in nature, okay? It's how uh, embryos turn into a hu human. Uh, it's how, you know, plants grow, just, just everything in this reality grows like this. But here's all you need to know is that uh, action and growth is never linear. Many people, that they're in their first month of their business, and they're going slow and they think, if I just triple my action, I'll make it go faster. There's only so much you can do. It, you actually make all the growth at the end. You see, it's not what you did in the first three months and then burnt out. It's kind of the tortoise in the hair that just kept on plugging away. And by the 12th month, they were still going at the same, adding the same amount of energy each month and then it takes off. And it <laughs>